European Lighthouse Farm, caring for soil is caring for life. So I was asked by the organizers of the conference uh, how, because there is so much interest from farmers around Europe uh, to become a lighthouse farm. So how can you become a lighthouse farm? So let me introduce myself first. Uh, no, I'm not an earthworm, but I was trained by earthworms. So that is what I always tell people when they ask me uh, how to become a lighthouse farm or uh, how I was educated. So I have a very basic education, uh, to be honest with you. I didn't attend any university, but I, I started to get into vermicomposting 25 years ago. And from there on, I put all my interest into soil health and, and all the composting and vermicomposting topics. And from there on, I would say I was trained not by university professors, but by earthworms. And what they learned me, what they told me and what I understood uh, within the last 25, 30 years is our soil is a hidden treasure. And it's really about that. And so let me tell you what we do. We have, uh, we started 25 years ago in vermicomposting. So we get, we were interested in thermophilic composting, which is normal hot rotting, but then afterwards also in uh, composting with the help of earthworms. So we produce organic fertilizer and petri soil substrates. And uh, there we already started to get involved in research and uh, demonstration activity because a lot of people were curious what we do and uh, we realized that scientists are really interested in our in our work so we started cooperations quite soon on the farm which so we also have a farm i'm a farmer an organic farmer the farm is based in near vienna it's in austria it's about 90 hectare about 40 kilometers northwest of vienna it's an arable field farm at the beginning and it's organic since uh, 2006. Uh, we stopped plowing. My parents already stopped plowing 30 years ago uh, because uh, they like the earthworms. <laughs> so surprising, surprising reason. Uh, they wanted to protect the earthworms, so they stopped plowing. And and from uh, now we have uh, about 10 people working on the farm. Eight of them are university graduates. We have interns. We have a lot of students doing research and practice on the farm. So last year we had 15 interns from eight different countries. We do research, uh, we do demonstration activities in a range of different projects like uh, Best for Soil, like uh, the Trace Erasmus project, uh, but also in cooperation with a range of different uh, universities and research institutions all over Europe. Our focus in research and demonstration is uh, mainly on soil health, uh, but also in agroforestry. So bringing back trees and bushes on arable land and in market gardening, which is growing uh, organic vegetables by hand for the regional uh, consumer market. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, how lighthouses can be involved in future projects. So I was uh, involved in the EU mission board for soil health and food, uh, which ended up in the uh, mission soil deal for Europe. And there we wanted to involve farmers, involve, involve practitioners much, much more. So what we came up with, uh, the idea was uh, the creation of 100 living labs and lighthouses within Europe till 2027, which you can see on the picture on the right side. So it will start with 10 living labs. What is a living lab? A living lab is a region within Europe, uh, like a district. And this region is conducts research and cooperation in soil health. And within this region within these living labs there are farmers working together with scientists and some of them will be lighthouses so when you are interested in becoming a lighthouse farm 
this is the way to go, I think. Uh, please be careful, watch out for new calls. They will, uh, will be opened in 2022 for living labs and lighthouses. And there are 10 uh, living labs will be established in 2023 and then another 10 in 2024. And then up to uh, the goal is to reach 100 living labs till 2027. So if you want to be a lighthouse farm, please go after this program. Look for it's a Horizon Europe. It's involved in the Horizon Europe Pillar 5 mission soil deal for Europe. Another thing that I want to uh, present to you is the global network of lighthouse farms. There is right now uh, 12 uh, lighthouse farms established all over the world. Uh, I think six of them are within Europe. And uh, the program was started by uh, Wageningen University, FSC, Farming System, uh, um, farming system ecology, I think, is a, is a short. And and the, if you look up for global network of lighthouse farms, you can find all information what these farms do. So they are really diverse. Uh, if you see the symbols on the top of this picture, you can see it's uh, livestock farming, it's vermicomposting. So this is ours, they're beekeeping, but also arable field farming, uh, grape fruits, vegetables, but also circular economy. Uh, trees, agroforestry. So there is a lot of different topics and it's really about systematic, uh, it has a very systematic holistic approach. So it's not only about productivity, but also about uh, other aspects of, of life or of farm, farm life to say. So uh, being a lighthouse farm is something really special. It's, uh, it takes a lot of time beside of the normal productivity that we have on the farms, producing uh, uh, fruits, producing uh, crops. It's also a lot of uh, other yeah, organizational management things. So be prepared. Uh, you will soon have a team instead of a, a small farm. So like, like us, uh, we have uh, 10 people working on the farm. Uh, eight of them are university graduates uh, growing vegetables, but all uh, at the same time managing projects. But it's still super interesting. It's, uh, uh, so you can be a real enthusiastic uh, program. And so I welcome you get involved into being more research, getting more into research, more into demonstration activity. It's really what we need. We need practitioners uh, out there. And you are already part of a network, part of the best for soil network. So uh, increase your network, uh, talk to scientists, talk uh, to researchers, but also talk to citizens and politicians uh, we as a farmer, we have to be involved in solving the, all the global challenges that we are facing as a humanity right now. So please get involved and I hope you see you there as a lighthouse farm. Just one thing uh, back to the start of this presentation, the earthworms. Uh, there is a nice saying and I think it's something to consider. It's a French farmer's proverb and it says, Dear God knows how to make a fertile soil. And he has shared his knowledge with the earthworms. So it's funny because uh, we as humans, we are so sophisticated. We are not able to produce, we cannot create soil. But the earthworms together with the plant roots, with the microbes, uh, so the whole ecosystem is the only way to produce soil. What we can do to support this activity is only to create the environment. So we have to create the environment. We have to do the measures. We have to use the methods that keeps our soils healthy. And this is exactly what we need for our, the next generations and the future generation to have a, a healthy planet uh, in, in, yeah, in, the, in the future. Yeah, thank you. 
Yeah, thank you very much for your talk. That was great to hear. Um, actually, very important for um, new people entering. I already uh, read that people from Morocco were joining, from Russia, from Romania. So we have really um, people from all around the world here in our conference. And um, please um, just put, if you have any question, um, just put it in the F and A, in the Q and A, <laughs> in the Q and A uh, part of this. Um, of this, on the right side, you have uh, the session, and there is a Q and A. So just put it here. So um, we have actually uh, one question by Reinhard. He is asking how important is the soil pH for earthworms, soil structure, and soil microbiology, and what are the target soil? Uh, pH for arable land. So it's about the acidity. Yes. Well, every every soil is valuable and every soil is a treasure. But uh, for production, uh, for uh, for the productivity function of the soil, it's important that the, the pH level is not too low or not too high. So the lower and the higher the the, the soil pH gets. So let's say four point five or lower or five or lower and, and higher than eight pH is, is super problematic. Uh, earthworms uh, like to, to they are, so there are different species of earthworms which are adapted to soil pH. So that's, that's not, not a question. So you can find uh, earthworms in, in more acidic soils, not too heavy acidic again, uh till alkaline soil so we have uh, soil ph levels of 7.5 sometimes even higher and there are still a lot of earthworms uh, thriving into them mm -hmm. thank you and um maybe we take this question from serge uh, how do you deal with uh, asian jumping worms uh, fortunately, we don't have to deal with them because uh, we don't we don't we don't have them here in Austria. And I hope this is uh, still this information is still true for the next uh, decades. Uh, yeah, I know there there are some troubles, and and it's the same uh, same over all over the world. Bioinvasive species are are quite a, quite a problem. But we have some uh, issues here in Austria, also not in our region, more in the Alpine region uh, with uh, what is called black-headed earthworms or something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, black, black-headed earthworm, maybe it's Schwarzkopfregenwurm. And, and they uh, make the, the grass dirty for the, for the cows when you mow them, mow the grass. And, and that's, that's an issue here. But normally, earthworms are beneficial and not, not uh, bringing any disadvantage to the soil. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, one really, really interesting question is also by uh, Vitalia. She is um, asking, what is the benefit of the um, of lighthouse farms from the standpoint of society? I mean, that is clear. She's uh, she's putting it this way. And but what is the benefit of um, a farmer directly? Uh, by becoming a lighthouse farm? Uh, well, there is <laughs> the benefit is that your questions will be will be answered, hopefully. So so this was the reason why we started to get into research and demonstration, because we had a lot of questions and we still have a lot of questions from practice. And when you have the direct contact to researchers, you can bring in practical questions you can in bring uh, bring in your your ideas your innovations and this is this is really the the most important advantage still there is a lot of work there's there's a huge workload involved uh, so you have to go to meetings uh, you uh, you're online uh, every day with 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 different tasks you have to to welcome people on the farm so that all, all of them all of this activity takes a lot of time so for for some projects you are compensated or for i hope for most projects you are compensated but definitely not for all so there is still a lot of enthusiasm a lot of motivation involved with 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 the farm uh and in the the direct contact to researchers so you get much more different perspectives so you don't not only talk to your uh, farmer's colleague your neighbor farmers 
about the problems, but you also talk to people uh, with different background, so you get a much better overview about the topics you are involved. So it's it's really important, and I I, I really the most benefit is for my farm itself or for my farm activity when I when I have contact to researchers. Mm -hmm. Um, another question by Soraya. She's asking, do you have any idea how many farmers in your neighborhood have been influenced uh, by your work as lighthouse farmers? Wow, that's a super difficult question because influenced on which level? I think uh, sometimes I hear that uh, I, I can inspire other farmers also to get involved in projects uh, and sometimes farmers come around and maybe less from the direct neighborhood, but more from, from a more, uh, more distanced because in the neighbor, in the neighborhood, it's uh, always a little bit more difficult, uh, to have an impact on, on other farmers because, uh, they say, oh, well, he was, um, with me in the ground school. And so what, what could he know better than I do? <laughs> so, so it's sometimes a little bit more difficult in the direct neighborhood, but still there is also some, some influence and people get more involved into research people uh, farmers are more interested in doing uh, corporations and we are also involved for example in operational groups with farmers from the region which was initiated by our farm and like a market gardening operational group that we start right now and another one on organic no-till and roller crimper methods and and, and other things and these these uh, are practices and methods that are also tried by by farms from the neighborhood right now. Okay, um, I want to say thank you, and maybe you have like one or two key messages for the audience you want to share. You don't have to, but you can if you want to. <laughs> okay. Give you a chance. <laughs> yeah, as I, as I said already, uh, if you if you are you are already in a network in the best for soil network and i think it's a huge it's a huge uh, beautiful network um, and if you want to get involved more into research and demonstration then don't be shy uh, try to figure out what is going on with operational groups for example so there is this uh, which was also already mentioned today uh, the european innovation program uh, for agriculture which is an initiative uh, by um, uh dg agri and and if you look look up the website you will find a lot of information a lot of fact sheets about soil please also uh, check the best for soil uh website and uh, yeah if we can uh if we can even have a, another project uh, after the best for soil period then then uh, it will go on and the topic of soil health is is so important and it's getting more and more important within europe so please mm -hmm. stay updated stay curious and uh, if you if we can welcome you once as a, a lighthouse farm uh, then i would be really glad okay super <laughs> then thank you alfred 